Hi, I'm Brian Sullivan and welcome to another video tutorial on BSTV. Today we'll be looking at how to set up a new project in Final Cut Pro. We'll go over some of the basic project settings and some handy file naming conventions that will help you keep your projects organized. Let's get started. Now here we are in Final Cut Pro. I've opened up a new project. The first thing we want to do is to go up to the Final Cut Pro menu and select System Settings. Now here is where we select a folder on our hard drive to uh, save all of our capture information, our video and audio, our waveform cache, thumbnail cache, and autosave vault. So we'll start by selecting this button here, Set, at the top. And I've created a folder on my desktop called Project Name Master. I'm going to select Choose. Same thing for Waveform and Thumbnail Cache and Autosave Vault. Then I'll go up to Search Folders. I'll select Set and choose the same folder. OK. Now next, we want to go up to the Final Cut Pro menu again and select Audio Video Settings. Now here, uh, we want to ensure that our sequence preset is uh, selected to our desired format. So I'll choose Apple Pro Res Standard 1920 by 1080 60i 48 kilohertz. Now the capture preset and device control preset don't really need to be set at this point. Um, our video playback is set to the uh, desktop screen on my MacBook Pro. We'll just select OK for now. Now next I usually like to create a series of bins to uh, store all of my media. I usually use the same file naming convention as the project itself. So I guess before we start creating the bins, I'll save the project, so save project as, and I'll usually name it the same thing as the folder, so project name underscore master and zero 01. It's always good to save your uh, projects a number associated with them so that you know, once you get to any major milestone, you can just save it as 0203. It just keeps it organized that way. Now I'll create a series of bins to store all of my media. So I'll create new bin, and I'll call this project name underscore capture scratch. I'll select that copy, create a new bin, paste that in, and I'll just delete that, capture scratch, and type in graphics. Create a new bin again, paste it, call this one audio, and one more called Timelines. I'll take the sequence or timeline and I'll call that project name oops offline zero 01 and I'll drag that into the Timelines folder. Now we'll just look over to our folder on the desktop and um, essentially in the Capture Scratch folder I want to create some folders that match the ones that I created in the project. So I'll call this one Project Name Audio. Project name graphics project name zero one 
media. I guess I should change this one to media so it matches. Okay, so that's that. I'm just going to save. Now we go back to our folder here. Now within audio, I want to set up a few other folders. In this one, I will call it project name scratch vo. So that's where we'll do all of our temporary narration. Another one, project name provio. And that's where we'll place the files that we receive from the professional voiceover talent. Another one will be project name music. And one more project name sound effects. Now we could take all these folders and simply drag them into the audio folder in Final Cut Pro. Obviously we don't have any media in those folders right now, so it might be better to drag those in once you've populated them with your audio files. But I'm just uh, trying to show you that you could just drag those folders directly into your project. Next we'll deal with graphics. We'll switch back to the Finder view. And under Graphics, usually I like to create two folders. One will be Project Name. I go Final Cut Pro to AE for After Effects. This is where I would send exported movies to After Effects for either um, color grading or emotion build or, or whatnot. But then I'll also create another folder called project name AE to Final Cut Pro. And that's where all of my rendered graphics will be stored um, and that's sent back to Final Cut Pro. So, um, I'll take these two folders and drag those into the graphics folder. Now under media, um, I guess we can talk briefly about that. Um, the media folder, sometimes depending on what format you're, uh, you have filmed your project on, sometimes I like to keep the raw information. So if I've shot in, XD cam, like an EX3 for example, I'll keep the raw files from the media card here as well as the transcoded media. The same thing goes for if you're shooting with a DSLR, I'll keep my raw CF card data from my Canon 7D uh, and then convert it to Apple Pro Res. This way I keep everything here, it just, it's just the safest way to go. For hypothetical purposes, I'll just create a new folder I'll call it project name Canon 7D raw. And that's where I would place all of my Canon 7D footage. And then I'll we'll create a new folder called project name Apple Pro Res. 422, and then a code that I would associate with it. So we'll just call it like X01, for example. X01 would be one media card. If you're shooting with several media cards, then you know the numbers would reflect that. So in this case, I only need to drag the Pro Res into my media folder in Final Cut Pro. You know, sometimes I actually would create another sequence. So I would um, duplicate this one. 
call this Apple Pro Res four two two X O one, and that's where I would keep the entire source, and then I could either boil that down, duplicate the timeline, or copy and paste from there into my offline project. Usually when you drag the files from your media bin into your sequence, um, you will be prompted to either adopt the codec or format that the media has uh, into your sequence, um, or you can set it manually. So I guess I'll show you that in this case, I'll just make sure that I'm I have my timeline selected. I'll go up to sequence and settings. And then under compressor, I will choose ProRes. Where is it? Okay, there. Apple ProRes 422. I'm at 1920 by 1080 square pixels. Upper field. I guess it depends if you've shot in, uh, you know, 2997. Or 24p. This is just an example. And then I will go to video processing. That that's fine for now. Timeline options. Set that back to zero. Render control. Under codec, I usually select Apple ProRes 422 if that's the format you're using. And that covers HDV, XDCAM, HD, EX and HD422. So that's important. Click OK. And that's about it. Um, I'll usually save the project. And um, I guess you just have to keep in mind that if you're sharing the project amongst, you know, several editors using external hard drives, the first thing you want to do once you open up the project is to go back up to the Final Cut Pro menu and check that your system settings uh, are correct, that you're pointing to the right folder on the right hard drive. That would be number one. And number two would be to go to your audio video settings and ensure that you are working in the right preset. Um, you can create your own easy setup file, um, which tends to be a good way to go. But that is totally dependent on the format you're editing in. Well, I hope you found this video useful. If you have any tips and tricks or comments that you'd like to share, please feel free to post them on the website. And don't forget to check out the blog for more video production, post-production, and motion graphics tutorials at briansullivan.tv. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.